name of Jesus, demons flee. At the name of Jesus, situations turn around. So we thank you for that beautiful name on today. We glorify and lift you up.
Good morning and welcome to Progressive Faith Church. My name is Pastor Anthony. I want to welcome you guys to the broadcast. Listen, we're already in July. The year is flying by. I don't know where the time is going, but listen, I'm excited. We're excited that you're joining us on this Sunday morning for our 1145 worship. And listen, while you're here, go ahead and like and share. Share the broadcast. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and subscribe and share this with five or six people that you know would um, need the word of God on today. I'm overly excited, just glad that you're here. And listen, we're going to go ahead and pray and we're going to get started and get right into the word on today. Father God, we thank you today for those that are tuning in, those that have taken time out of their schedule, out of their daily avocations to to stop and say, hey, I need to refill. I need to, um, you know, rejuvenate my body and my spirit, man, my spirit woman. And so we thank you that this is a place that they've chosen on this very morning to come and to receive the word. And so we thank you for it. We pray that as the word goes forth, as the book begins to speak, that it will speak into their lives, their situation and and, and things that they are looking to do. We pray that it will be a, a word that is confirming for some. And we thank you that it will be a word that will do exactly what it needs to do for others. And we thank you for this in your son Jesus name. Amen. All right. Well, what we're going to be talking about today, um, we're going to be going back to the book of the beginnings, Genesis, and we're going to be dealing with Joseph. So if you've been a Christian for any time or if you're brand new, um, this is dealing with Joseph and we're in Genesis chapter 37. This is the NIV version. If you want to follow along at home, the NIV, and we're going to go to Genesis chapter 37 and verse five, and we're going to read that for your edification and your hearing. And it says, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. Verse eight, his brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and what he had said. And if we skip down to verse 19, And when they saw him coming, they said, here comes the dreamer. They said to each other, come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And what we're going to be talking about today for about 15 to 20 minutes of your time before you go back and watch the NBA or the tennis or whatever you feel like doing on today, we're going to be talking about I'm still going to win. I don't know who's in your house or where you are, you're driving or if you're outside, but, you know, nudge somebody and say, I'm still going to win. See, we, we, when we read this, we, we see and understand that Joseph started out just simply sharing with his family what he had seen and and, in sharing with what he had seen with his family, it it, it got a little tense because you understand Joseph was was the the younger son. There there was one younger than him, Benjamin, but Joseph was the younger son and and they got jealous. They're like, look, are you going to rule over us? Are you going to tell us what to do? And he was saying, look, this is simply what I've seen. This is what God has showed me. And so sometimes when God shows us things, it's, it's classified information. It's not stuff that we need to be sharing with others, maybe at a, a particular time, but maybe not right now. And we have to wait until we get the green light to share what God has shown us. And so the text helps us to see also that the enemy might want to kill us, but he can't. You know, and we're going to get into that in a minute. Um, and, and there's many ways that God will allow us to be tried on our way to our journey to significance, to becoming to whom we're going to be, to becoming to what we're going to do. And we have to stick and stay and trust the process. Um, point number one, your ability to work through problems makes you a winner. You know, when we look at Joseph, when we see and understand, for those of you that are Christians already and have heard the, te- the text, when we understand everything that he's going to go through and how he, he stays faithful and, and how he doesn't let it get to him, we understand that through it all, he won. And we're going to look at that process on today. 
So when they said, here comes the dreamer, this is this becomes a, a family issue. You know, when we look at the text, and I think that was verse 19, they said, here comes the dreamer. You know, sometimes God is giving you something. It's, it's, it's an idea. It's something that you created, and then you shared it, you know. And, and, and then every time you see somebody, they're like, here come you. You think like that little restaurant going to get started. You know, people joke you, and they nag you, and they pull at you, but not just any people. This was a family matter, a family issue. And, and, and they decided to take it into their own hands because of the revelation that he had received of who he would be and they didn't like it to try and kill him and so when we look at verse let me skip down verse 19 they talked about him showing up and when they got ready to kill him Reuben said no 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 let's not kill him now, Reuben, if you know anything about the, the tribes, Reuben is the eldest brother. There's Reuben, there's Reuben Simeon, Levi, Judah, Gad, Asher, um, and then there's Issachar, Zebulun, then there was Dave, uh, Joseph, and then Benjamin, ben Amim, of my father. Joseph is the younger, but it was his big brother, Reuben, that took up for him and said, hey, listen, let's not kill him. And so and that's what I said. The text shows us that even when the enemy comes and he wants to take you out and he wants to kill you because of a dream, because of an idea, because of something godly that God has put in, 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 in you, God will always send somebody, one person, a, a situation. The gun won't go off. This won't happen. That won't happen so that you may live to be able to complete the mission. Um, your ability to work through the problems makes you a winner. He went from the pit to almost being killed, to being sold to the Ishmael lights to ending up in Egypt and if you know the story he ends up in Potiphar's house while he's in Potiphar's house Potiphar's wife came at him daily and, and, and trying to get him to uh, sleep with her and, and Joseph wouldn't do it because Joseph was an honorable person he was a, a honorable man at the time and he wouldn't do it and so now we understand that he gets accused of, of um, rape and he ends up in jail and so one of the things I, I wanted to point out is sometimes people think they're hurting you, but they're helping you. You know, when this, this whole situation is going on, we have to understand that providence is taking place, that God is at work through the whole situation because God knows that Joseph has to get the dream. God knows that Joseph has to tell it to his family. God knows that they're going to try and kill him. See, in the theater of human history, it's already played out from the end to the beginning, then from the beginning to the end. So you have to understand that God knows and sees, and then he says, let there be, and then everything is put into motion. And so into motion. And so his brothers, you know, selling him, it, it had to happen. You know, Potiphar's wife lying on him. It had to happen. So sometimes in our lives, we, we think people are hurting us and we think things are going bad and they're not working out the way that we suppose, but you're actually right where God wants you to be. You know, sometimes because we get caught up in situations and circumstances, we think we've messed up the plan of God for our lives, but your brothers, sisters, you're not that powerful to ruin what God has orchestrated and put in motion. And so Joseph had to settle down and understand and know that, hey, I'm, I'm here. This is happening. This is real. And, and, and I got to deal with it. And so the second thing I, I, I want you to grasp from this text is no man can stop the dream. In verse 20, you know, Reuben comes in and, and Reuben saves him. Reuben, you know, um, the big brother saves him from being killed. And and one of the things that we have to understand also is the first thing that they tried to strip from him is what was unique. Um, and, and, and verse two, you know, it, it was the thing that God had put in him. It was the thing that was the most unique is what they tried to take. And sometimes the enemy will come. He'll try and steal your, your, your idea, your, 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 your invention, your, your gifting, whatever God has given you that's unique. Please guard that with your heart. You know, it says now Israel loved Joseph more than any of the other sons because he um, was the son born to him in old age and he made him an ornate robe. And when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than them, they hated him. And it says when and, and, and the thing that they wanted, they wanted that that um, robe taken. 
They wanted the image taken. You know, they were jealous. You know, don't be jealous. You know, when God has blessed you as a family um, and as a coworker, whatever the situation is, understand that there is something for you coming down the road and you can't get jealous of anybody else of what they have, what they drive, where they live. None of that. But look out for things that are unique being stripped from you by the enemy. Joseph suffered for his entire family and Israel. I'm sure there were times when Joseph said, man, I, I, I've messed up the plan. But no, you can't mess up the plan. God has put something in you. And, and no matter how bad it looks, no matter sometimes how topsy-turvy it looks, we're right where he wants us to be. Now, Joseph lands in jail. And, and, and while he's in jail, there were two people there. And I want you to see how when you're steadfast and you stick to what God has told you to do, um, things will come back around. You'll be blessed. The situations will switch. Things will shift and it will shift in your favor. And it's not in our time. It's in God's time. Um, in jail, there was a cupbearer and the baker. And, 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 and um, this is now we skip over to Genesis 40. And it says, then Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. See, Joseph said, listen, it's not me that's interpreting the dreams. It's God that's showing me your situation. He's giving me a look into your life so that I can help you pivot and, 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 and be better or pivot so that you will know what is going on. You know, Joseph told the cupbearer, he said, hey, man, he said, um, the three baskets are three days. And he says, within the three days, Pharaoh will lift you out. Um, well, um, no, no, no. He said for the uh, cupbearer, he said the three branches are three days. In three days, Pharaoh will lift your head and restore you to your position. And he says, but when all goes well for you, remember me and show kindness for me to Pharaoh to get me out of this prison. Um, and verse 15 is so powerful. It shows that he, even though he dealt with all of this on a level that most of us couldn't, verse 15 showed his humanity. He says, I was forcefully carried out of the land of the Hebrews. And even here, I have done nothing to deserve all that's being done to me. He said, man, listen, I'm being treated as a felon. I'm in jail. I've kept a great attitude. You know, the Bible says God was with him. You know, he was still shown favor. But even in all of that, you've got to imagine in the back of his mind he's thinking listen I haven't done anything you know I'm innocent but I'm in here with murderers I'm here with people that have raped people I'm here with people that have done all types of illicit activities and I gotta stick and stay I, I, I know what I heard I know what I saw but it, it's not looking like that right now for me in the situation in the circumstance that I'm dealing with right now and then the second one he he um, prophesied and he read the dreams of the second man. He said the three baskets are three days. And he said within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head and impale your body on a pole and the birds will eat away your flesh. And so these gentlemen, they had their dreams interpreted and exactly what Joseph said is what happened. The chief cupbearer, however, did not rem remember Joseph and forgot him when he got out. And as we continue through this passage when you get over to Genesis 41 sees a lot of time is passing by and Joseph has been dealing with things he's been in prison accused of all of these different things he's been keeping a great attitude but, but listen at Genesis 41 and verse 1 it says when two full years had passed <laughs> it says Pharaoh had a dream and he was standing by the Nile. And it says, when out of the river, there came up seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the, uh, the reeds. Now, what I wanted to point out in that verse is, it's a two full years. See, sometimes you help people. Hey man, look, I can tell you what your dream means. Hey man, I can help you with your, store, your stock portfolio. Hey, I can help fix that engine. Hey, I can help paint your room or, you know, remodel your house. But listen, you know, when you get some money, help me out. You know, throw some my way. Two full years had passed. They didn't remember him. The cupbearer didn't remember him. And Joseph was still in jail. He's still sitting there falsely accused 
accused, sitting in a cell, hasn't done anything wrong. Guys, do you understand this? See, sometimes it doesn't seem like you're winning. Sometimes it doesn't seem like things are going in your favor. And sometimes a lot of time will pass by. You know, people owe you money. You know, they owe you a thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars, and and you've given it to them by good faith. And and you see them rolling up in the new Mercedes, and and they they wearing the, the latest Louis, the latest this and that. And you see them, and you know they haven't paid you. Sometimes some time goes by, and 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 things have not been done properly to you and for you and through you. And so the, la the last thing, because I don't have a lot of time, is sometimes it won't look like what you saw. You know, what he saw was himself on the top. He saw his brothers bowing down to him. He saw all of Israel cheering him on, and, and you're the man. I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. No, but it didn't work like that. All this time he's in jail. You know, and you know the food is not good in jail now, so imagine what it was like 2,000 years ago, you know, there was no lights. There was no running sewage. I mean, this was hard. This was real hard time. And he's sitting there and he hasn't done anything wrong. Sometimes that 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 vision that you got from God, you you saw yourself living in Windermere and Bel Air and out in the Hamptons and and way out south in Chicago, not the south side where my family lived, but the real south side of Chicago where the mansions are. You saw yourself living there. You saw yourself driving a Bentley or a Rose or something like that. But but right now it, it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like what he showed you. But stay faithful until the end. A godly gift in due season has deliverance power. See, 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 Joseph had a godly gift and a godly. There's nothing like a godly gift in due season. Come here, David, a godly gift in due season, the ability to be able to fight Samson, the ability to be able to conquer the, the, the Philistines and pull down, even though we couldn't see a godly gift in due season. Joseph interpreting dreams in due season. There's nothing like a godly gift in due season to deliver you and, and catapult you to where you need to be. Things can change quickly. And when we get on to the end of this, because I don't have a lot of time, um, Joseph goes through all of this. Pharaoh has dreams. He can't understand the dreams. He's seeing things. They don't look right. They don't seem right. And, and when we get over to Genesis chapter 40, and verse 39, it says, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known, and this is after Joseph had came in and told Pharaoh, hey, man, there's going to be seven years of plenty. There's going to be seven years of famine. And listen, Joseph had no degree in agriculture. He didn't have a business major, didn't have his doctorate in business or nothing like that. But he started breaking it down to Pharaoh. You know, after they pulled him out of jail, you know, the cupbearer, after all this was going on, he said, hey, man, there was a guy when Pharaoh called everybody else and they, they couldn't get it done. See, that's why I say a godly gift in due season has deliverance power and power. Pharaoh said, there's got to be somebody that can interpret this dream. There's got to be somebody that can understand what I'm seeing because what I'm seeing, I don't understand. And see, Joseph is locked away. And just before we get into verse, verse 40 here, Joseph is locked away and they come and get him. They say, you're about to be put before the Pharaoh. They take him out. They shave him. They, they put on some fresh garments and he goes before the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh tells him the dream and Joseph breaks it down. He says, it's about to be seven years of plenty and then there's about to be seven years of nothing. And he says, this is the plan that we need to do. And then he broke it down to him. And then now we go into Genesis 40 and verse 39. And then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has made all this known to you, there is none so discerning and wise as you. And then verse 40, he says, you shall be in charge of my palace. Listen, this guy just got pulled out of jail now. And that's why I said things can change quickly. See, sometimes you will go through and your life looks like the stock market. It's up and down. You know, it, it looks like a bad stock. You know, it's up, it's down. But overall, it's going up. But you got to zoom out so you can see what it really looks like over time. You felt like when you were in the pit, nothing good was happening. You felt like when you were in the jail, nothing good was happening. But slowly but surely, your value was going up. Because a godly gift in due seasons has deliverance power. A godly gift in due seasons has deliverance power. And now when we get to verse 30, he says, you will be in charge of my palace and all of the people will submit to your orders. 
only with respect in my throne will I be greater than you. Did y'all hear that? Can you imagine you get pulled out of jail and you become the president, the prime minister, the, 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 the chief, the king, the potentate, just like that because of a godly gift in due season. Joseph is in charge of Egypt with no degree. Joseph is now in charge of Egypt. See, see, sometimes you got to wait for the win. You know, sometimes the game goes into overtime because LeBron couldn't sink the shot. Sometimes the game goes into overtime because Steph Curry, even as great as he is, is even as good as Giannis and all these guys, they miss. Sometimes it goes into overtime and, and you got to play. Sometimes it goes into double over, triple overtime, and your life might be in triple overtime disaster, just not looking good. But stick and stay and know that God has something great for you. You're still going to win even though you lost your house, even though you've been dealing with cancer, even though people have died from corona and they're saying that the D variant is coming back. We're still going to win. Let me read this end of this, y'all, and we're going to close. Joseph is in charge of Egypt. Verse 41, so Pharaoh said to Joseph, y'all, this is him backing up the Brinks truck. He says, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Verse 42, the Pharaoh took off his signet ring. Man, he gave him his ring. This is the ring that he uses to solidify situations and issues and circumstances. When the Pharaoh puts his ring in there and they see his seal, it's a done deal. He gave it to Joseph, the power, the authority is being transferred to a, a previous felon just a few minutes ago. And then he says he dressed him in his robes of fine linen and put a gold chain on his neck. He had a dookie rope like he's Ron DMC. I mean, he's sagging in gold now. And then he says he made him ride in the chariot as the second in command and people shouted out, make way. You know, they were saying, look out, Joseph's coming through, you know, and they had the music going and everything playing when he would ride down the street. And then it says, thus he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. See, when it's payback time, can't nobody hold you down. When it's payback time and God has said that you're the head and not the tail, you're above and not beneath. He says you are a winner. He says he, he's already said it. Y'all, we've got to catch up with where we are in the book. Joseph is winning, but he went through a long time of looking like it wasn't going to happen. You know, he, he, he's down 40. And, 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 you know, we got the NBA finals going on now. I'm going to just give you the scenario. He's, he's down 40 and Giannis is hurt. He's, he's down 40 and we, and we have no shooters and, and, and Chris is gone, Chris Middleton. It, it's looking bad, but then Lopez steps up and he's dunking, he's shooting, fadeaways, crossing people over. The less, le the less likely to succeed steps up and wins the game. See, you're still going to win, but you got to stick and stay. You got to understand that God has great things for you. And I want to show you the end of this and we're going to close because I'm over my time right now. But after Joseph wins, y'all know the story, his brothers come in and all of this. They didn't even recognize him. He'd been gone so long. You know he'd been in jail. You know when you're in jail, you get big. <laughs> he, Joseph was muscular. Joseph had abs. They came in there. Joseph was like, you know, he was handing out food. They like, this guy looked familiar. Yeah, that's your brother. He was stacked, you know, in jail. You know what we do. And y'all know, quit acting new. Somebody put some fire in the chat. Y'all know what happened in jail. When they showed up, they didn't know him. But he later on took care of his whole family. And the end of this, to show you how he really won, if we go to Genesis chapter 50, and I'm done. If we go to Genesis chapter 50 and verse 15, it says, when Joseph's brother saw, this is after everything had happened. This is the, the end of Genesis. It says, when Joseph's brother saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrong we did to him? They started having second thoughts. They was like, man, dad's gone. You know, Joseph is in charge. You know, dad would keep him in check. But now he's gone. And Joseph heard them. In verse 19, Joseph said this. Joseph said to them, he says, don't be afraid, for I'm in a place of God. He says, you intended harm for me, but God intended for good to be accomplished. What is now being done and saving of many lives so then do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Y'all, he won with forgiveness. He forgave them. 
Some of y'all know y'all ain't forgiving Junebug and Becky Sue and Chris. Nobody that tried to kill you, that threw you in a pit, to put you on a journey to where you were in jail and falsely. We just wouldn't do it. But he forgave his family. Some of y'all right now ain't spoke to your mama, ain't spoke to your dad. They're alive. Mother's Day done passed. Father's Day done passed. The only way you're going to win is to forgive on today. It's time to look beyond the faults and all. Yeah, yeah, they owe you some money. They're always going to just get over it. They're not going to pay you back. If everybody paid me that owed me, I could buy this studio on me in a the day. They're not going to pay you back, but you've got to be the bigger person and forgive. Yeah, the car got wrecked. Yeah, they set the house on fire. Get over all the stupid stuff that's happened and understand, y'all, that time is short. Joseph won with forgiveness. He forgave them. And look at the end, y'all. It says, he told them, be not afraid. He said, I will provide for you and for your children. That's legacy. So, Father God, we thank you on today. We thank you, Father God, that we're winners. Not only do we win for us and our children, but we, children, but we're winning for our brothers, our sisters, and those around us. Father God, give us the anointing that allows us to stick and stay, even when it doesn't look bad, even when things have been lost, even when we've been tempted with prison and loss of jobs and loss of life, and even as we're going through pestilence and, and coronaviruses and this and that. Father God, allow us to know that we're still going to win. We're still going to win. In the end, Father God, you've got a crown for us. You've got something bigger and better. You've got exactly what we need, when we need it, where we need it, and how we need it. You provided for Joseph all along the way. Protection, food, care so that he can win. And Father God, keep us right now during this season, during the 2020s, Father God, the rough years, the tough years, the seven, the lean years. Allow us, hallelujah, to look to you for everything that's needed. Allow us to look to you and look beyond our needs, beyond the faults of others and forgive. And we thank you for this right now in your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I don't know who's watching out there, who needs salvation or who needs to forgive a family member, a coworker, or whatever that situation has been, it's, it's, it's not gonna be anymore. Understand on today that God's got you. He's not, you know, mad at you, anything like that. But understand today that if you need salvation, I want you to pray this prayer with me. If you need to forgive somebody, go ahead and reach out to them right now. Shoot them a text. Hey man, what time can we get up? Let's meet somewhere. We need to talk. You know, call your mom, call your dad, call that brother, that sister, that cousin, whatever the issue is, let's work it out. Let's win with forgiveness. You know, once you've forgiven people and your heart is right, you know, when your heart is right, God will bring you into the company of the people that you need to meet that are critical for your success and well-being. But our hearts have to be right. Joseph had a good heart, even though they forgot about him and left him for two years after he helped the cupbearer and, 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 and the baker. But he kept a good heart and he was able to come out and use his gift and his gift promoted him. And the one thing I didn't tell you is a lot of times we're trying to buy all this stuff, the house and the car and the ring and the clothes. It was given to Joseph. It was gifted to him because of his gifts, because of his heart. See, when you have a good heart, the stuff that other people are buying, it'll be gifted to you. This past week, my wife and I were on our, our celebrating our anniversary and we were at the military base in Tampa and we're talking to the lady at the PX and she says, by the way, hey, I got a laptop, a, a brand new MacBook. I don't know if you want it. It's $200. See, when you serve God and when you tithe and when you give, I said, ma'am, $200. I said, is there something wrong with it? I'm checking it out and I'm checking the hard. She said, no, no, it, it was, it was a, a display model, you know, and the, we got the new ones coming out. You know, if you want it, it's $200. See, God's got stuff for you. You're not going to pay full price when your heart is right, when you're a giver, when, when you understand that your covenant has been solidified before the foundation of the earth. So I don't know who you are today, but it's time to make a change. It's time to pivot. And that's the way you're going to win. It's in this pivot. It's in this shift that God is going to do it. So say, Father God, I thank you for coming into my life on today, for showing me a different way to win, for showing me a different way to live. I believe that your son, Jesus, that he died, that he rose on the third day in the morning, that he got up with all power in his hand. And also, Father, I repent of any wrong, wrongdoing, anything that I've done that hasn't been like you, forgive me of it. And then I receive you in my heart 
as your as father, as savior, and as caregiver, and he will take care of you the rest of the way. If you've prayed that prayer, you are now saved. You're now part of the, the body of Christ. All of heaven is, is uh, rejoicing. See, when you come into the protection of Jesus Christ, he cares for you. He says, cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. He becomes your caregiver. So it's a done deal on today. And then if you need prayer for anything, you can reach out to us. Our email is on the lower thirds. Our phone number is there. Give us a call. Well, right now it's offering time. I know I'm over my time a little bit, but it's offering time. Listen, we have all of our ways there on the screen. We appreciate you guys for sewing into our ministry. We appreciate you um, for helping us keep our broadcast going during this time of coronavirus. And if you want to partner with us through Tidely and give $100, $20, $5, a dollar a month, whatever. You can set it up on a reoccurring where you don't even have to think about it, but this is good ground to sow in. We appreciate you as for seeing us as a place where you can come and get the word on Sundays. And listen, we appreciate you guys for sharing the word. Even if you don't have anything to sow into the ministry, just sharing the word and, and expanding our reach through the people on your social platforms helps us greatly also. So, Father God, we thank you right now for each person that is sowing, that is, that is giving an offering, a tithe, and is connecting with this ministry. We pray right now that you bless them, Father God. You bless whatever they've put their hands to, to, to bring income into their house. We pray right now, Father God, that you anoint them, Father God, to do exactly what you called them to do during this season. And we thank you for the gift. We pray that it will be used in the manner that it is sent for. And we thank you for this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, that is it for today. Listen, on behalf of me and my wife, Cherie, Pastor Cherie, we're just excited. We thank you guys for tuning in every week. We have people that watch every week from my cousin Luther up in New York, my cousins up in um, Syracuse, people in Mississippi, um, Pastor Tina Cannon up in Detroit, First Lady Tina. Um, all of you guys, we appreciate you. Sherry Benson, we're praying for you. Brenda, we're praying for you with your uh, surgery. Guys, continue to support and share, and we know that all will be well. Guys, listen, you are dismissed. I will see you on Thursday for Theology Thursday. God bless you.